the tallest animals in the world and I am not going anywhere. We've got such a special moment to spend with them and as we know, we, uh, we're definitely not rushing off anywhere. So, I think in a way, this gremlin-filled drive hasn't actually been that gremlin-filled at all and it's given us the opportunity to sit with the animals in a way that otherwise we might be rushing around doing other things. I could still be chasing the wild dogs for all I know. Actually, that's not true. They made a kill on Torchwood, so I definitely wouldn't be still chasing the wild dogs. They killed a steambok and they're busy feeding as we speak. Okay, a mom and calf slowly but surely making their way towards the water. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. I'm hoping they're going to go and have a drink. Taylor and I have rotated around Voyatella Dam. I'm sitting here now. And watching the two of them feed off opposite sides of the same tree. Our cedar point, very good question. You want to know how powerful a giraffe's kick is. Strong enough to kill a lion if it gets it in the right place. Now that kick is unbelievably powerful. I have seen, I know some people who made the mistake of trying to drive past a giraffe uh, in close quarters and they got kicked by said giraffe and the entire front part of their windscreen, their windscreen was shattered and the entire sort of supporting side arm was completely crumpled. And that's how tall they are as well, because that is no small feat. They're actually quite supple. And they can kick forwards and backwards. So predators had best beware if hunting a giraffe. They are not defenseless at all. And they do kick with a very, very powerful response if they're provoked. Now, there have been many recorded cases, cases of a giraffe kick killing a predator. It does happen. The trick is to dodge it, of course, but if they kick a lion on the skull, that's it. Chances are that that cat is not going to survive. I've actually been in, involved in a few giraffe captures before, which is a, diff, a very tricky one because you've got to, you don't want to sedate the giraffe to the point that it actually falls down because it can injure itself really badly. And what that means is that the vets have to get the exact dosage right of the sedative to the point that the, the giraffe can be caught, but it doesn't fall over and go to sleep. And it's a, it's a complex process involving some really strong men and some very thick ropes once the giraffe is sedated. And it might sound cruel, but all of those situations have been situations where the giraffe were, the inter intervention was happening due to the giraffe needing medical treatment thanks to people. So we always have a policy of non-interference, but in this particular case, it was because the giraffe had found itself snared. And it's quite a, it's quite a process, let's just put it that way. And the trick with herbivores, once they are sedated, is to actually blindfold them blindfold them and block their ears and in that way you really truly minimize the stress on that poor animal. Hmm, apple leaf, that won't be very nice. Milo, the zoo loving scientist. How lovely to have you Milo. I feel as though <laughs> this is li these live safaris truly gather together like-minded people. You want to know if giraffe are ever particularly aggressive. Not really, no. There are the odd cases where giraffe have attacked people. It's unusual. There's the famous video clip of one very confused field guide being chased by a giraffe. The most likely culprits in the situation where there is a little bit of aggression coming from a giraffe is what's known as a stink bull. So a mature giraffe bull, then the reason he's called it a stink bull is because they start to secrete the same substance that makes human feces smell so terribly awful. You have to get quite close to smell it, it's, su it's subtle unless the wind blows it in your direction, but mature giraffe bull are the, probably the most likely candidates for that sort of aggression. Although remember, calling an animal aggressive, I prefer not to use that term. Defensive, and, you know, although I guess for the male there might be a degree of aggression con involved. But for the most part, they're very placid, very peaceful animals that have absolutely no interest in doing us any damage. Well, speaking of animals that I'm pretty sure are 
if they weren't so small, would be full of aggression and would be plotting to take over the world. Let's go over to James, who's found one in the tent.